Well, to discuss this vaccination effort and other top stories of the day is Bill Balkett, political reporter with Reaction. Uh, Bill, a very good morning to you. Are you cancelling Christmas parties? Absolutely, I am not. I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. Um, ha happily, my grandmother was in our social bubble, so we got to see her, but not the rest of my family. Um, but the hope is for the Prime Minister is that this uh, booster programme will hopefully mitigate any problems of sufficing around the Omicron variant, uh, any problems also around waning protection from the current doses uh, of the coronavirus vaccine. So yesterday at that press conference, just you know, giving more of an outline of the logistical measures and what's going to be needed uh, in order for, uh, as the paper's been reporting, for all adults to receive uh, a booster within the next two months. And uh, on the issue of financing of all this, what, what, what's the sense about how much it's going to cost, where it's going to come from? Uh, ultimately, it's going to come from the taxpayer. But the good thing that for the uh, for the government is that they've already got the doses, so that's that's not fine. I think when they originally got all the different batches, uh, I think it was uh, enough to vaccinate the entire country twice, at least with two doses. But now, uh, with every adult now being able to receive a third dose three months after their second, uh, but uh, there's quite a lot in this as well because also. Um, as well as having more sites and also the military personnel as well. Um, I think community pharmacists, uh, pharmacists will also be incentivized to deliver more jabs um, with payment being increased to £15 uh, a shot and then an extra fiver uh, for pharmacists if they work on a Sunday and then a £30 premium uh, if they offer to pharmacists for vaccinations uh, delivered to people who are housebound. So, yeah, there are questions about where this money is actually going to come from. How do you feel about the slight mixed messaging we got yesterday? You know, we are months into this pandemic and the government know that their communication strategy has got to be crystal clear. And still we're hearing contradictions about how we should be spending the next few weeks. No, that's definitely true, Rosie. I mean, uh, you had Jenny Harris yesterday who was saying that, um, that the British public should limit socialisation. Uh, but then Boris Johnson having to clarify that that's not actually the case. And the worry that I have, at least with this um, this Omicron variant, is that we still don't know enough information about it. We know some bits about its transmissibility, but we still don't know about, you know, if it uh, severe disease. I mean, the early evidence seems to suggest it doesn't. And then the other problem as well is that evading the vaccine, um, which also we don't know about, which has a question why we're introducing these booster program uh, if the Omicron variant is going to evade protection in the first place. Now, let's uh, move on to uh, the NHS waiting lists, they could double uh, by 12 million people by 2025. This is despite all the announcements of cash being poured into it. Um, these, these numbers, I mean, they, they just spin around in the head, don't they? It does. Um, the National Audit Office says that the waiting list, at least NHS waiting list, could double uh, to 12 million patients within the next four okay. years if the You're NHS so runs quiet. at the pre-pandemic really? capacity. Um, uh, currently, I think there's around 5 million people awaiting things like cancer uh, treatment and also routine checks, partly due to the pandemic, partly also due to you know many people being put off because of the stay-at-home messaging, uh, but also the workforce shortage in that uh, staff are overworked and also the NHS is understaffed. Uh, as well. So there are all these numbers to put into the equation, but uh, the, I think the worry also with uh, a statistic like this um, is, is that the NHS would then, with this new uh, health and social care levy, uh, 36 billion, it would all be swallowed by the health service, leaving basically no money for social care. Uh, so yeah, there's a big mountain to climb here. Let's move on to uh, the ongoing crisis and the, the sort of political headache of the relationship between the UK and the French. Priti Patel is planning on embarking on this tour of sort of European capitals to try and come up with some solutions. What do you think her best bet is? Yeah, it's a really interesting story, actually. I think Patel is uh, planning 
uh, a tour of European capitals after being snubbed by the French uh, for, you know, emergency talks. Um, so, and I think part of it around it is around what is, um, you know, Britain's response to the migrant crisis. Um, you know, bilateral solutions between the European Union uh, and the UK. But the UK also think with its um, new Nationality and Borders Bill, which has this controversial uh, turnaround policy, that they think that they could be the ones to play with uh, as the, the big actor uh, within this, because the Conservative Party have a long-standing commitment uh, to cut immigration in this country, and that's tied around the idea of Brexit. OK, well, it's good to talk to you, Bill. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. That's Bill Bowkett, political reporter with Reaction.